So we are switching gears and we're going to be focusing on a whole new topic in this unit. This topic is over graphing. And in this video in particular, we're going to be just covering the vocabulary associated with graphing. So starting with the vocabulary, everything that we will be graphing in college algebra will be associated with the rectangular coordinate system or another name that you might hear associated with it is the Cartesian plane. But everything that we'll be graphing in this class will be on this coordinate system. If you ever have to take a trigonometry class, you'll probably learn a whole new system altogether, but we will not worry about that at this time. So how do we graph things on this rectangular coordinate system? And we're going to start with the x-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal axis that everything is based off of. If you think of a number line, that is basically what your x-axis is. So I'm going to draw it here in the middle. Your number line goes forever in both directions, just like your x-axis does. Um, it starts in the middle at zero, and it has positive numbers on the right and negative numbers on the left. Now, to make a coordinate system out of that, I need to partner that up with the y-axis, which is, of course, the vertical axis. And think about just taking that number line and rotating it right 90 degrees. So that would leave me with this here. And my vertical axis is my y-axis. Your y-axis is exactly the same. It starts with zero in the middle and positives up above and negatives down below. Now, in the middle of this here where your two axes meet, that is what's called the origin. So basically the middle point of both of those. All right, whenever we want to graph anything, which is, of course, what this unit is over, the way that we graph them is basically we plot a whole bunch of points, and then we play connect the dots. So we need to first figure out how to plot these points. These points are called ordered pairs, and pairs because they have two coordinates that go with them, two coordinates to put on our rectangular coordinate system. The two coordinates that we see are exactly the things that we've already discussed, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. When we talk about points or ordered pairs, they need to be labeled in specific fashion so we know that we are actually talking about ordered pairs. So they look like this here with x and then a comma in the middle and a y. And they must have parentheses around them. The parentheses are what tells us that this is a ordered pair. So let me draw a couple examples here for you. Let me draw the ordered pair of 2, 3, where my x coordinate is 2. So I start at my origin and I count right 2 units. And then my y coordinate is 3, so from that place I count up 3 units. And that gives me my point or my ordered pair there, which is 2, 3, and parentheses around it. And it's a lot like playing Battleship. The only difference is Battleship has letters across one dimension and numbers across the other. Here we have numbers in both dimensions. So another example, let's talk about the ordered pair, negative 3, negative 1. I always start at my origin, and I go left 3 units. Notice you always count left and right, or the x direction first, and then down 1 unit. So I count up and down, or my y direction second. And that is a common mistake that I see a lot with students, is they count the wrong direction first. So remember, x direction or horizontal first, left and right, and then vertical, y direction, or up and down second. Now, I do want to make sure that when you do put in these ordered pairs as answers, whether it be online homework or written homework, that you do have them with the parentheses around them. If you don't have the parentheses around them, then either version of the homework will count these as incorrect. 
Okay, moving on to my next vocabulary word, we're talking about quadrant. Of course, the prefix that goes with this is quad, so that means I have four of them. And hopefully you noticed when I partnered my X and my Y axis together, that created four regions, or AKA four quadrants. I label these quadrants just one through four, but I label them with using Roman numerals, and they start in the top right. So my top right were this ordered pair of two, three was, that's actually in quadrant one. And again, my one is in Roman numeral. The reason that I start in my top right is because all of my ordered pairs in that quadrant will be positive. So everything is positive in quadrant one. Then we go in counterclockwise direction. So my quadrant two is the top left. And quadrant two is when I count left on the X axis and up on my y-axis. So all ordered pairs in quadrant two will have a negative x value and a positive y value. Continuing with the counterclockwise motion in quadrant three is like this ordered pair here where I counted left on my x-axis and down on my y-axis. So all points in quadrant three will have negative values for both the x and the y coordinates. Last but not least, quadrant four, or IV in Roman numeral, will count a positive X direction and a negative Y direction, right then down. So not only will you be plotting points, but you might also have to pick out what quadrant they're in. And it should be really easy, just look at the signs of the number or know that the label of those quadrants go in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, so, Let's just say I have a point here. I might need to come up with the ordered pair that's associated with this point. And you can see it's left four units and up four units. So my ordered pair would be negative four, positive four. And I could say that that is in quadrant two. A second example is I could pick a point right here the ordered pair associated with this point is right five units. And then I cannot count up or down any from my X axis, so my Y coordinate is actually zero. Now that becomes a little complicated to figure out what quadrant it's in because it's kind of in two different quadrants. And so actually it's a trick question. We do not say that is in any quadrant whatsoever. We say that that is an intercept, which is our last vocabulary word. If your point ever lands on or ever intercepts one of these axes, then we call it an intercept. So since this point five zero lands on my X axis, then I would call this an X intercept. And if I come up with a point like here, which is 0, negative 4, that lands on my y-axis, so I call that a y-intercept. So I believe that we have discussed all of the vocabulary language that you will need to graph any types of graphs, focusing on the starting points or the ordered pairs in this video.